Hey everyone, how's it going? It's been a little while since my last video. Well, at least considering my latest spiel about me turning over a new leaf and trying to release a video more than once a year. So this video is going to be a little different than my other videos I've made so far. Originally, I had an idea that I would make a video going through an in-depth, deep metal snare drum restoration guide. But when I actually started editing this project, I realized that there was really nothing new here. Just more of the same. Plus, I had a whole bunch of little bits and pieces of unfinished raw footage. Certain projects that I'd maybe started and not finished properly, or I didn't really record the outcome, or maybe just some video ideas I'd started shooting, which ended up on the back burner permanently. Never to be quite released, or always intended to be finished later. I told myself that all of these clips would somehow be made into like four or five small individual videos. But in the end, I found myself doubting whether or not it would be an interesting or even worthwhile video. I had a creeping feeling that although I have more content, the videos themselves would be kind of filler. Content without much meat. So halfway through editing, I came to a realization. Thus, I decided to try something else. See, you've seen me restore plenty of snare drums already, so there's really not much point for me to go over the same thing over and over and over again, meticulously while I stress the same points that I've already covered. Instead, I realized that I had this whole pool of footage from a few years ago that could be incorporated into a sort of story or day in the life or something like that. It was a really stressful time in my life where I was getting ready for a big move. It was a little chaotic, there was tons of work to be done, and looking back on it, I noticed something about the footage. There was a whole lot more of, well, me than other videos I've shot. Usually, when shooting my videos, I try not to use way too many shots of myself. To be honest, I'm kind of not into the whole personality side of things. Sure, I like to bring my own unique brand of geekiness to the show, a bad joke here and there, or some funny memes, etc. But for the most part, I treat these videos like a long tutorial, and I try to be as informative and chipper as I can. I tried to stay reserved and let the drums stay in the spotlight, at least as much as possible. Instead of mainly close-ups of my hands and parts, there was quite a lot of footage of my wife and I working together in order to meet a deadline. So I thought, hell, better to use the footage and show you guys what my typical weekends looked like once upon a time. You see, I didn't start refurbishing drums out of the blue. At one point, this was my livelihood. Let's rewind a little bit. If any of you have done any channel snooping, dived back into the archives and annals of this channel, you may have noticed that the videos originally started out as cymbal and drum demos, with very simple editing and almost no content other than the cymbals or the equipment being played. This was either by my friends or in a jerry-rigged studio while I filmed with my phone. You see, I used to have an eBay store that I used to supplement my income since about 2012, when my wife and I first moved to Michigan. I won't go into specifics, but we were in a situation where I had to be the breadwinner. Refurbishing and flipping drums helped keep us above water. At that point in time, the videos only served one purpose. They helped me sell on eBay at a time when cymbal demos were rare. The videos were grainy, short, ugly, and had no soul to them. No other purpose than to get right to the point. Let potential buyers hear my product and then get out of the way. I had edited relatively little by this point, except the occasional school project, perhaps. I had had another YouTube channel in the past for some other silly videos, but I haven't really posted anything there outside of these few clips. It wasn't really until sometime around 2016 when I started making content, and by that I mean actual content that I wanted to make, liked to make, and could commit to without taking anything too seriously. I wasn't worried about being too professional, and I didn't want to do anything with angst or worrying if people would like it or not. I just wanted to make something fun, and maybe help others that were kind of like me once upon a time. My first video was more or less a joke I made at my mom's house when I came over to visit during the summer of 16. And since then, I had an informal agreement with myself that I would do it again. Since then, I've made a handful of videos that I would actually consider my own. Not me hiding behind a camera or letting my friends play. No, these were mine. And for the most part, doing these videos has been a good time. Fixing drums is just a skill that I happen to have. And some people really like to watch other people work on things. And I think just like cars or old toys or dirty houses or carpets, there's something that people really enjoy watching when something gets fixed. It's refreshing, especially if it's been old or neglected. There's this old Native American parable, or at least I think it's a parable. It goes something like this. Westerners tend to look at the land and the objects within it as typically dead. That is, animal or plants or fish. I mean, they're alive, but almost everything else isn't. The rocks, the river, the sky, and so on. All of these are dead things without a spirit. So if you were to say walk up a mountain and happen to see a shiny rock, a modern western point of view would be that you chose to pick up that rock and put it in your backpack. After all, you are conscious, and the rock is dead. You own the rock now. However, in this story, from this alternate point of view, you chose nothing. 
you were compelled to pick up the rock as a result of the rock's will to be picked up. Thinking about it in this way, inanimate objects are given a soul, a purpose, and feelings. This is the way that I and many other people look at our instruments. These are extensions of ourselves, as much a part of our bodies and mind as our fingers, our toes, our thoughts and ideas. And no instrument is more visceral, engaging, and physically expressive as drums, or at least I think so. In that spirit, looking back on all the good feelings and joy that drums have given me throughout the years, I think it's only fair that I honor and cherish those instruments, or at least those at one time or another had given those same feelings to their previous owners. Music to me means togetherness. It means emotional bonds and messages encapsulated in timeless form can reach out of the ether and make you feel something even if you've never met the person who wrote the music or even originally played the piece. Music can make us cry, dance, cheer, stomp our feet, or even bring feelings of utter disgust and repulsion. Anything that can be such an extension of our very humanity and bring those feelings to the surface needs to be treated with dignity, respect, and care. And that's why I do what I do. Beyond the simple satisfaction of polishing a tarnished surface or tightening a loose screw, oiling a rusty hinge, all of these things are clickbaity and fun and satisfying on the surface level. But to me, nothing makes me more proud or fills me up with more of a sense of accomplishment than finishing a project and sending the drums or cymbals on their way to another owner who can share those moments of joy and togetherness that I once did. But it's not all candy and rainbows either. For each full restoration, there could have been at least two or three projects that I failed. I couldn't go all the way, either due to lack of experience, lack of tools, lack of knowledge, or just a lack of coordination. These projects I have filmed are in my video library, and I've wondered at how to use the footage. Until now. It's a struggle, but it's an important one. It's part of life. We all make mistakes, that's how we learn. In the beginning, I didn't really know what I was doing. I would lurk on drum forums and read. I was so overwhelmed and amazed at the same time, learning about all the intricacies of drums. All the parts, all the designs, all the companies, all the cool stuff that goes into finding the right sound. I mean, I look back on myself and I can't help but smile, thinking about all those early days, the young, angsty, confused, and eager teenager who was just trying to fit in. I couldn't really talk to people. I went from being shy to obnoxious to loud and then louder as time grew on. But I'll never forget the first time a friend of mine invited me over to hang out at his house. He started playing the drums and I said, I wish I could do that, but I bet I never could. To which he responded, yeah, you could, you wanna try? That's the type of social interaction spawned from a common interest in music that helped me really get out of my shell. What followed were many years of bands, breakups, get back togethers, builds and breakdowns. And the whole ride has been an absolutely crazy and fun journey that I never would have experienced if I hadn't dared to pick up drumsticks for the first time. Existential, metaphysical and philosophical pondering aside, there's something good about fixing things. Now, whether there's some deeper psychological reason for this, that's kind of outside the scope of this video. And either way, that's missing the point. Fixing things feels good. The same thing can be said about life. If something breaks, it will never work as intended until you fix it. It might take a day, a year, or even a lifetime, but fixing something that's fixable or just trying can be a really rewarding experience in itself. Sometimes though, you just need to know when to cut your losses. That's another part of life and it also applies to fixing drums. There have been failed experiments that I've tried, whether that be crushing glass and trying to make a glass glitter lacquer at home, to brazing extra holes in an old acrylite shell that I definitely should have left alone. Some things can be salvaged, other things you just gotta do the best you can. And sometimes things are beyond your control and you also gotta be okay with that. In the end of the day, sometimes you find out that really big, scary projects wait in your closet and they're neglected and left alone for months. Like the time I bought an old Slinger Limb kit. I was so scared to death of the scratches on the beautiful walnut veneer. I spent hours and hours thinking about how to fix it, calling cabinet makers, trying to source veneer, trying to find out what kind of lacquer was used so I could refinish the drum. Hell, even at one point I was considering stripping everything off the drum and redoing the whole surface. Nothing seemed to be a satisfactory result, and every estimate I came up with was in the hundreds of dollars. But in the end of the day, all I needed was a little dash of old English dark wood stain. It cost five dollars and the job was done in ten minutes. And before I knew it, I had sat around like an idiot for almost a year, when I could have fixed the drum set in less than a weekend. It turned out exquisitely, and it was beautiful. The same story goes for an old Slingerland pedal I refurbished. I thought I would have to buy replacement parts because of a stripped thread, but in the end it was just a thin strip of electrical tape and it fixed everything without an issue. In the end, it's experiences like these that make me happy to do what I do, even though it's not my main job and even though I don't get all the time in the world to do it either. 
I have a stable full-time job doing something completely different, and fixing drums is only a small part of my drum life. I play in bands, I record once in a while, and I hope eventually I can upload more and more of that as time progresses as well. Either way, I won't be going anywhere anytime soon. And as long as I have time to do so and energy to do it, I won't stop uploading, even if it can take me months and months to throw something together. So far, there's been nothing but positivity and support from my small pool of subscribers and viewers. And in the end of the day, that's what really makes me feel super special and I'm extremely humbled that people would take time out of their busy day to watch some of my material. As I said in an earlier video, there's a lot going on in the world today, and there's a lot more important stuff happening right now than to expect people to want to listen to some guy fixing drums on the internet. So I want you to know that every second of your precious time really means a lot to me. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching my videos. It really means a lot. If you made it this far, then I thank you again. You make this possible with your support just by watching. And if you feel like you have an idea or you want to reach out and leave me a comment, I would love to read it. Positive or negative, that doesn't matter. It's important for me to hear back from you and hear what you want to watch. It really helps engage me and motivate me to keep going. With that, here are a couple finished pictures of the various drums and such that I ended up fixing throughout this video. I can't show everything because there's a really special video I promised to make all the way back in 2017, and I think it's time I got started on that. Well, that's it for this one. I hope you're all staying safe, and I hope you like the video. Another special shout out to my subscribers. You guys are the best. If you're new here and you want to see more of my videos, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe too. So far, the community has been nothing but overwhelmingly positive, and suggestions for improving and questions are always, always welcome. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.